Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Oh, wonderful. Great. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. So, how is going? So, did you get my code? Did you get my code? Hey, Shalinda, did you get my code? Yes, sir. Very good. Did you run it? No, sir. Why not? I mean, I, I, I was not uh, there. Uh, yesterday, I went outside. That's why I was sitting. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, who ran the code? Sanjana, you were absent yesterday. Did you run the code? No, sir, I didn't go through. I was not, I was not feeling well, so I'll... Okay, okay, so you did not, did you get the code? No, sir, I didn't check it in it. Okay, please check it and, you yes, know. Sir. Hey, Bharat, how are you doing? Bharat? Hello, sir. How is going? How are you it's, doing? It's pretty good, sir. <laughs> Great. So did you run my code, to, you know, today? Or yesterday? Your code? Yes. Did you get my code? Um, Yesterday's uh, class code. Did you get it? Oh, uh, I didn't do the fetch thing yet. Ah, sir. you didn't get it. So why don't you get it? Yeah, I'll get it, sir. Okay. Look, the deal is, guys. I'm telling you repeatedly. The only way to learn coding is to do it. There is no other way to learn coding, right? And if you think that you know, uh, just by getting a degree. You are going to get a job, maybe, but for that purpose, go and watch Three Idiots if you have not watched it earlier, right? So please watch Three Idiots, right? It will tell you that even if you get the degree, it would be of no good. And, and you know, this is something, this is something, uh, one of our department chair, you know, when I entered into my undergrad, uh, electrical engineering. So our department chair came to us and he said, look, you are now in engineering university, right? And this is a university. And this is exactly the same thing, you know, three years thing, you know, exactly replica it happened to me uh, in my, you know, actual life. So he came to me, came to us all. And he said, look, you guys got admission in this department out of, you know, you, you are one of uh, 200 seats, right? Uh, winner of 200 seats out of, uh, and uh, sorry, and 200,000 students applied for against these 200 seats. And you are one of them who won this seat. And now once you are in this department, ultimately one day you are going to go and get the degree and become an engineer. Nobody can stop you from be, uh, becoming an engineer. But the point here is that it is up to you. Either you make it a triumph of success or a plot of, you know, uh, a kind of plot. So how is this so? So if, for example, you will learn your work, you will know that how to do something about electrical engineering, ultimately this degree will you know, take you places, you know, bring you jobs and so many things. But if would you not, if you would not know that, hey, what is electrical engineering, what is electron and what is electrical circuit, then definitely you will hide this degree. Hey, I am not an electrical engineer, right? So this is the same thing goes to computer scientists, you know, after a few semesters, not even, you know, if not after this semester, after a few semesters, you will become masters you know, computer science. So somebody will expect from you that, hey, you would be able to code. And they will say, they'll ask you, hey man, let's sit here and code. And at that time you say, hey man, I don't know how to code. I'm a different kind of computer scientist. You know, then it will be very difficult to justify at that time. So this is your time. Learn how to code. Okay. No? Yes, sir. Done coding. Okay. So let me ask this thing. Who downloaded my code yesterday and ran it? Very good. Kamalesh, you did so? 
Who else did it? Sanket, you did so also. Very good. Who else? I did it, sir. Okay, very good. Prithvi, I'm happy to know. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. So why don't we ask Sanket to share their screen, share his screen with us and let us discuss the code a little bit. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen, but there is no code yet. So please open the main JS file. JavaScript file, right? Uh, yeah, this is this is basically something else we are opening. It was probably Krausal. So no, this should not be here. So it is it is Krausal one, right? And this is within it Krausal. These are assets. So did, you did not run the code earlier. Okay, so this is the JavaScript function. So for those people who could not quite get it, so I would ask Sanket to uh, walk us through this quote a little bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't feel shy. Just, you know, tell us whatever you want to tell us. Sanket, you need to unmute yourself before you talk. Yeah. So uh, we were basically creating one uh, carousel where uh, we can slide the, to the next image. And, or the uh, previous one. Or the previous one. So this is the HTML file. Uh, so I'll tell uh, line by line. OK. So you, you can start from line number nine. OK. So this is the heading. Uh, let's make our heading one we have given. Okay. And after that, we took one container, and uh, in that we took one div. Uh, we gave a image a class as image div, so that we can uh, uh, give some design to the uh, layout of the image, or whatever picture we are showing. And below that, we took two button, uh, uh, one for re uh, left and one for right. Okay, so one quick slide. question. Somebody can tell me that why would I have a container DVN and then an image DVN? If you show us this code in browser. For, for the um, uh, buttons there uh, and the border to fit. That's why we did a container. Okay, just open this code into the browser and then tell us. Okay, this is not that code. Go one one step back. Krausel, yeah, this is Krausel one. The right, you are in the right, right folder, and here you know heartbeat. So now here, who will, yeah, this is this was good, right? So here tell us that, can somebody tell us that why would we have a container DVN and then an image DVN? Why not only the container DVN and no image DVN? What is the science behind it? Uh, if we don't give the image DVN, um, if we, uh, for adjusting the width of the image, it will go beyond the container size. Uh, I don't think so. You can say, uh, you can do the same thing with the container DVN also. Okay, think over it, right? Think over it and then, you know, possibly you can answer me towards the end of this uh, lecture, right? Okay, so uh, open, uh, show us the editor, please. Okay, yeah, then we have buttons and, okay, tell us that once we press the right, uh, left button, what happens? You have to unmute yourself, my dear. You you need to be careful sorry, about sorry. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. So, so we took one uh, let variable and uh, left button and for right button. And yeah, so we are getting we are we are kind of fetching, fetching the left button reference and right button reference from your HTML DOM to JavaScript, right? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. 
So uh, by using query selector, we will get the value uh, in variable left button. Same way right. for right button and uh, same way for main image. Right. Uh, for main, main, main image, you use dot class file name. Uh, here we can see dot class file name main image div. So right. that we have taken mm -hmm. and that we are calling uh, the image and taking its value in variable main image. Very good. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, we took one uh, variable uh, in that since we are having five images, uh, pictures. So we have taken five, initiated the value and uh, taken five in that. Okay. Right. Now we have we have created one common function. Uh, we in this in this project uh, we need to create two function, but we have uh, to reduce the uh, usability of the code uh, line number yeah, of times of the code we created. We want to avoid yeah, to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. We created one one common function. So we have created one common function flip image, and uh, we give uh, uh, give one uh, variable uh, parameter uh, dir as uh, as one parameter. Yeah, direction which is which tells us which direction do we want. Which direction? Okay. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, we have taken main image and uh, in main image uh, the source file comes here and then in init image source uh, we have taken init image slice zero so comma what minus is this five. thing in line number seven what are we getting from here yeah so in line number seven we are setting uh, how many image like we are setting minus five so we will be having minus five uh, Im uh, when we uh, go forward uh, there ah, will be ah, here you got wrong. So who is going? Who wants to correct uh, Sanket that you know what is happening in line number seven? Can you enlarge the font a little bit so that everybody can yes, see sir. it easily? Yes, sir. You, you can just use gesture actually. Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. What you do? Whatever you want to do. Yes, sir. Okay. Just leave it. Leave it as it is. Okay. Yes, thank you. So yes, what is happening in line number seven? Who is going to tell us? A camelish. Would you like to tell us that what is happening in line number seven? Sir, exactly, sir. But you said like uh, for selecting the image, like we are assigning that value zero comma minus five. Okay. Okay. Who else? Do we have uh, say Prithvi? Would you like to tell us what's happening in line number uh, seven? Yes, sir. Uh, in the line number seven, actually, we are splitting the image source. Uh, like, uh, the link, yeah, we, uh, for, um, the zero comma minus five will give us the last five. Uh, zero last comma five minus characters five is going the, to give what? The last five characters. No, 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 no. Of the link. Yes, Kamal, you tell us. Zero comma minus five is going to give us from beginning oh. from to the last one. Last fifth character excluding it right so basically yes, initial part of the string so if you have any doubt about it that what what are we getting over here what can we do about it how can we resolve that doubt how, how can we see that you know what is the value of uh, init image source you know how can we get hold of it and use console log console log very good very good right so basically we are getting the initial part, middle part, and end part. So I see that people have doubt in this. So please don't uh, hesitate to run this code, right? And uh, just walk through the code. And as you walk through the code, if you're not understanding anything, put effort to understand it. Initially, you know, uh, to crack a little piece of problem, you may have to put a lot of effort. And once you crack it, you learn so many other things in the paraphernalia, right? And this is the way you learn coding. You don't learn coding by reading the code. You learn coding by writing the code, right? Okay, yeah, go on, please, Sankit, further. Yeah, so in this variable, we took starting uh, the address. In the, we take, in this variable, we take the middle part and this, so we take the end part and part the, the extension dot jpg yeah. right dot yeah. jpg yeah. Here, right yeah. and then what are we doing here so we've taken this variable in this variable we are doing one calculation so in this number mid source so in this we will be having 
the uh, middle uh, address of the image source middle middle part of yeah. the string yes yeah. uh, plus dir right and dir uh, plus dir is the direction which would be either yeah. plus 1 or minus 1 plus 1 or and, minus 1 and who, who who can tell me that what is this number why are we adding this number of images here who can tell us yes who can tell us yeah please go on unmute yourself Who is talking? Oh, okay, Shalander. Just a minute. Who raised the hand? Actually, somebody else raised the hand. Uh, let me see. I think it was Menthon who wanted to talk. So let us give a chance to Menthon. Shalander, I am going to give you some chance. Okay, don't wait. Yes, Menthon. Mentor, we can we can hardly hear you, so probably you have to fix your audio system. So Shlenda, you take your chance now. So uh, number of images means the number of Im images we are giving, sir. The five images. So wh why are we adding this over here? Uh, I mean to get the uh, the repeated images, number of images. Ankit, would you like to talk? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, wait, a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Danush, you tell us. Why are we adding number of images here? But to repeat the images from one to five. So why do we add number of images? What role exactly this number of images addition is playing over here? When we add that uh, after fifth image, uh, first image will come up. Why? So, How? I thought that this is because of this uh, percentage number of images. Yeah, yeah, it's module. So uh, mod is doing this. So why, why are we yeah. adding this plus number of images, you know? Sanjana, you want to tell us about it? No? Okay. Um, yes. Oh, so that... Ankit, you want to talk about it now? Yeah, since we are giving modulo there, so we need total number of images to find the remainder. So why we are adding here? Uh, so anybody uh, who knows exactly, uh, I, I explained this reason. Or, you know, so, in this uh, when we give module, mo mo module, module sign, that time 0 and 1 were coming. So during 1, we were not having problem. But uh, during 0, uh, when the, uh, the remainder was 0, that time it was not getting the no, number no, no, of... This is not the issue. Issue is, guys, that JavaScript is a little bit different about modulo of negative numbers. So... For example, modulo of one is one, modulo of two, uh, uh, you know, base five is uh, is two, you know, so on. Modulo of four, base five is five, four. Modulo of five, base five is zero, right? But modulo of negative one, base five is, you know, negative one. And this is a little bit different from the rest of the languages. So basically here we are adding the number of images over here. And by adding the number of images over here, this resolves this negative number problem. Yeah, when we click on the left button, that uh, at that time uh, we will like generate zero to minus one. So it will like minus zero to one, negative four, right? Negative, yeah. That's yeah. why the number of we add number yeah, of. Yeah, you are right. Yeah, so basically we want to make it positive so that model so, yeah. works according to our expectations, right? Okay, great. Thank you very much, guys. So please, whenever I send you code, it is your responsibility. It is your obligation. Look, at one point, I was happy that maybe everybody is working and I should not take time out of the lecture to test you guys, right? 
But suddenly I felt that many people were, you know, were not working, they stopped working. So I'm not today, I took like 25 minutes out of lecture just to test you guys. Right? I was thinking that maybe if I will, uh, I, I take uh, lesser time for testing and maybe I will cover more, it would have been better for you. Had you been working, you know, by yourself, you know, because you're a master student, you should be, you know, self-motivated, right? So please make me feel good that, hey, people are working. And so that I spent the entire lecture uh, in delivering some good stuff to you so that, you know, we can cover more and you, you can get more out of these lectures, right? But this is not good that you don't even download the code and uh, and many a time you don't bother to run it and you don't you know, walk through the code and you don't see it. For example, you could, have, uh, you could have imagined that, hey, how can I do this thing? How can I do that thing? How could I, can I change the position of the buttons? How can I uh, maybe put some transition into it? Let me give it a try. So there are all, all these avenues are open for you. You could have done so much about it. Right? So you could have like spent seven, six, seven hours with this code at least. Then you would be, would know that what's happening in coding, right? Otherwise, you know, you know what happened once, uh, once, you know, I, I always wanted to uh, take swimming lessons. So one day, you know, one of my students, he said, hey, I'm going to swimming. Would you like to come along? I said, hey, you have to teach me. Then definitely I will go and you know, okay, we went to the swimming pool and uh, my instructor, who was my student, but at that time he was my instructor, he said, that, okay, Sachi, you better stay here at the edge of the pool and let just observe me. So he made a plunge right into the pool, right? And here he is swimming. So I thought this is such an easy process, no problem. So I made a plunge also into the swimming pool that thinking that, you know, uh, I would also be able to swim. But as I went into the pool, now I was unable to imagine that, you know, what is, which way is the upward and which way is the downward and where to go, you know. I was all drowning. And then, you know, somehow lifeguard, you know, got hold of me and warned me that, hey man, if you don't know swimming, don't come to the pool, especially to the deep side. So, so this is exactly happens to you. Once you don't know coding, you know, you don't know what's happening here. Where is the upside? Where is the downside, right? So don't let it happen to you. And this is possible only when, once you, you know, try coding by yourself. Okay, having said this much, you know, motivational talk. So let me start with today's lecture, right? So please unshare your screen and let me work on yes, this code sir. with you, right? Okay. Share screen, share. Uh, just give me a minute, please. Just give me one minute. I need to turn on my air conditioner because it's getting very hot here and suddenly I'm feeling discomfort and I cannot code while I'm not happy. Just give me a minute. So I'm back. Okay. So let me share my screen. Oh, I, I have already shared probably, right? Hello, everybody. Can you yes, see my sir. screen? Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. So let me open Atom. Uh, 
Oke. Oke. This is not your code. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. So web framing and browser one and heartbeat browser, right? So let me rename it a little bit. So let me rename it to basic browser. Then we'll make it into heartbeat, right? So rename and let me name it basic. Right? And let me open this main.js over here. Right? Save it. And let me open it in the browser. Okay, this is your code, right? And let me just change the name of the folder over here. Instead of heartbeat, it is now basic. Right, so this, this is the clausal you had made yesterday with me. And it is working, right? It is working, you can see it is working. Right, guys? Any questions so far? Okay. Now we want to add something into it. Say for example, we want this thing that it, this browser should be active even without, uh, uh, without clicking at the buttons, right? So for example, how can we do this thing? Keyboard. Huh? Keyboard is one option, right? Definitely keyboard is one option. But another option is that, you know, it is browsing uh, it is working with time, right? After a few seconds, it flips the image, right? After a few seconds, it flips the image, right? So this thing in JavaScript is done with the help of set interval, right? This thing is in JavaScript is done with the help of set interval, right? So let us see that how does set, set interval work? So for example, we say JavaScript, Google, So it is always, you know, very important that uh, you know that how to consult online documentation to implement something. Because I can tell you that, hey, you man, you have to do this, you have to do this, and ultimately I'm done with that, right? And you would be able to do so, in, you know, one day once you will keep on practicing. But the main thing or main skill I want to develop uh, in you during these lectures, also, you know, one of the skills which I want uh, you to know is that how to consult online documentation to implement something. So for example, I know that, uh, for example, that if you have set interval, that set interval function will work after some time. And I can do something like this by using set interval. So let me see, let me, you know, check this thing that how to implement it, right? So I say JavaScript set interval, right? So set interval. So here you will get two links. One is MDN link, I think. Normally MDN is on the top, but not in this case, right? But MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, I think this is the third link. And then you have W3 school link. So MDN is more detailed reference, right? It is always wise to, uh, to consult uh, MDN, but uh, W3 school reference is good for the beginners, right? So let me consult W3 school, for example. So they are saying set interval, right? Method. So they are consulting, try yourself an example. So they are giving an example, uh, alert hello every three seconds. So they are saying that this, this code is going to send alert after three seconds, every three seconds. So what's happening here? So the command is set interval. Right guys, set interval, and then you have a function over here. And this function, this function is going to be called, 
from here to here. This is one function. And this function is going to be called every 3000 millisecond. And 3000 millisecond makes three second, right? You can uh, actually put three S over here to, if you want to give in second. Otherwise you can give in milliseconds and you can say that 3000, right? So basically, you know, this function will work every three seconds, right? So let us uh, see that uh, how can we implement in our code. So let, let's copy this thing over here actually. Or you can go over here, try yourself. And uh, you can try it with this try it button. And if you walk through this code a little bit, you can see that this is a button over here. And look, here they have not given an event listener. Event listener is the latest and most advanced technique, right? But before the advent of event listener, there were event handlers. So this is the event handler technique, right? So in event handler technique, right within the HTML element, you say on click. So in event listener, we say click only. So here we'll say on click and name of the function which you want to run on click, right? Name of the function which you want to run on click, right? So set interval function will run and let us see what happens. So, so this function will run and this function is going to set the interval which will alert every three seconds, right? So let's try it. So three seconds, press okay. Three seconds, press okay. So every three seconds, it is going to run, right? And you saw this thing that, you saw this thing that since this set interval statement is wrapped in this function, so it ran once this function was executed. For example, if I cut it over here and paste it outside this uh, function uh, wrapper, right? And I run the code, right? I run the code, right? Now it is going to do it without any triggering. Can you see this thing? Right, so once again, let me reload. Let me reload. So, so look, here is that this set interval is wrapped within this my function. Can you, can you see this thing guys? So this set interval is wrapped within this my function, right? And my function is triggered on click. So once somebody presses this button, this try it button, right? What will happen? That my function is going to run. And as my function runs, it executes this statement, set interval. And set interval is saying that, hey, set an interval of three milliseconds, three seconds, and every three seconds run this function. So basically it will run every three seconds after the click of this button, right? So once I will press try it button, now it will st start working. And after every three seconds, it will say hello to me but not without the clicking of the button, right? But if I do one thing, if I reload, if I reload and I cut this set interval out of this function and bring it outside the wrapper of the function, right? Bring it outside the wrapper of the function Right now it is sitting in the open JavaScript, not within a function. And its execution is not dependent upon the execution of my function. So as the code would be loaded, it would be executed line by line. So as you know, the page would be rendered first and then it will come over here, function would be declared and then set interval would be executed. And as the set interval would be executed, Right, it will set the interval of three seconds and after every three seconds it's going to run this function. And this function is going to do what? This function is going to say hello to me. So have you got the idea now? So once you have got the idea, so let us implement this idea. Let's implement this idea into our code, right? So we come over here into our code and we say, let us put this in open space. 
So we come over here and we say control V set interval is a function. So le let me write this piece of the code myself, right? So I say set and one big reason that I always uh, like to punch in code in front of you, just to tell you that how do we actually punch in? This is a very important technique to learn. Otherwise you will not be able to understand uh, pre-written code, right? So I say set interval, and then I know this thing that for set interval, the second parameter is the time duration, right? Maybe three seconds is a good time. And the first parameter is a function. Right, so first parameter is a function. And what function, what, what is this function going to do? I don't want this function to say me hello. Rather, I want to, execute this function, flip image one, in forward direction. Right, and now you can see this thing that this set interval is sitting in open space, right? In global space, it is not enclosed within a function, right? It is not wrapped within a function. Now it would run as it as the code would be. So basically when the page would be loaded, this JavaScript would be loaded. And as the JavaScript would be loaded, so this entire code would be executed, let, 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 let. And then this function would be declared. And then we add this event listener, we add this event listener. And here we come and we'll set this interval. And as we are going to set this interval, so every three seconds, flip image is going to be executed, right? With direction one, right? So save it, right? Save it and, uh, and let's run it. So in order to run it, reload it. And now hopefully every three seconds, it should flip the image automatically. Can you see this thing? Yes. Right, every three seconds it is working and it is flipping the image, right? So, so say for example, what else would you like to do with this now? Yeah, you are a client, for example, and I have presented you with this uh, flipping carousel, right? And now you want to give your next wish list. Yes, yes. It can be assigned. I... Can we? It can be assigned uh, in the bottom of the image as a radio button so that we can count like how many images are there. Yeah, this, this can definitely be done, right? This can and definitely be done, right? But I, I, I currently, I don't want to do it uh, uh, because it, it will divert our attention from the carousel. But definitely we can do it and we'll make it, right? So don't worry, I'll when make I, it for you. When I over on the image, image uh, will stop. Yeah, very good. So this is a very genuine thing that once I am on my, I am hovering on the image, right? Say for example, I want to say this is, these are all news items. And as I hover my mouse on the image, this carousel behavior should stop, stop. Yeah. right? So this, this is a genuine, this is a genuine, uh, you know, requirement. So how can we do this thing, right? So we come over here. So the question is that how should we do it, right? So we add event listener of uh, our. So we can have we can uh, have this thing that once we are at the image. So did we have the image? Right, image main image. Yeah, we have the main yeah. image, right? So we have the main image, and we can put an event listener over there, and uh, and once that event listener is over there, right? So what are we going to do? Is that we are going to remove this interval, right? Set interval and remove interval, right? So we have to remove this interval, right? So basically, you know, I know this thing that probably it is remove interval, but let's see, a clear interval, I believe. Yes, clear interval. So, uh, so let us find it out that 
how does clear interval work right so we say javascript clear interval right so this is very important that you learn how to uh, look at the reference and then how to use it right so clear interval method w3 school look so they are saying they are doing set interval right they are doing set interval over here right and they have given a name to the set interval and once they want to clear the interval they say clear interval and use the same name over here and it, it gets cleared make sense right so basically this is what they are doing that they, uh, they are giving a name to this set interval thing right it is going to return a reference and as they want to clear it they just say clear that interval right so let's see that how can we do so once you know over here so we come over here we say so what can we do so we say var flip interval is equal to this right so this we have taken it as a variable right and we say we come over here and we say main image right main image dot add event listener and there is a big list of events you know which can happen so you can once in a lifetime you can browse over the list just to see that what are various events there right so for example yeah there are like 500 different events right so you cannot memorize all of them right so but deal here is that once you have passed over them once in your lifetime you know you can understand okay this was one of the events right so for example i'm going to use probably there is one with the name mouse over right so you can search for it right but i know that probably this is mouse over right mouse over so mouse over is the function right a mouse over is the event and it is going to run a function sir mouse over spelling is m o u okay yes you're right right so basically we say mouse over and execute this function and what is this going to do it is going to clear interval which interval flip interval right got it so so let's see that it work save it right and save it and reload it and reload it okay so first of all we let let us check this thing that image is flipping by itself very good image is flipping by itself and now i'm going to take the mouse on the image right can you see mouse cursor is on the image and it has stopped flipping right it has stopped flipping right can you understand this thing everybody yes great very good and now for example now what what should be the next thing uh, we have to resume the interval because we were uh, very left. good so once you know it has stopped flipping once it's, this mouse comes out it should resume flipping right so it's not it has not resumed flipping what should we do now so we have to we have to set interval again so we have to set to set interval, interval again yeah once again right we have to set that interval once again right so now let us go to our code and see now how can we set that interval once again hey man so 
cursor outside the container like we have to find like that so my mouse out right so yeah. next event is mouse out right so we have to listen to the event mouse out right so look this is this is how we think about our code right so mouse out is the event can you check somebody can check that mouse out is an event right on, mouse? on 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 mouse out, out. Uh, okay so if you are using event handler technique it would be on mouse okay, out okay sir yeah okay if you are using event uh, listener, listener it is mouse out right yes. so we come over here what is happening okay so we come over here we say okay so mouse okay clear interval right and i think that we can write this code right inside this event listener because once a mouse is in it calls to close this interval shut down this interval now once the mouse is out so at that moment we have to put that event listener right and we say what should we say we say main image dot add event listener add event listener right and we say mouse out is a function right so mouse out and mouse out this function should be executed and do what set interval again again set interval so one thing I can do definitely is that set a new interval, right? Set a new interval, right? And once I set this new interval, right? Once I set this new interval, so what is going to happen? The image start flipping. Yeah, images start flipping, but what will not start? Okay, look, so save it. Right, reload it. It was working and I have mouse over it, right? And if I remove the mouse, it will start flipping again. Right? But what it is not going to do is this. Can it's you see this thing? Only for one. Yeah, because, because of this reason, because of this reason that this was the flip interval which was working and you cleared it right and now this is another set interval and this you even don't know which one is this how to put it in the loop i guess right so look loop is not answer to everything right loop is not try to understand this thing the javascript is asynchronous and even driven Right, it is event driven, right? So we, and most of the time for event driven thing, we don't put things into loops, okay? So how, yeah, now we have to think a little bit that how can we do this thing? So we can do this thing, we can say, okay, let's do this thing. Let's put this, all this thing into a function. Right, let's put all of this thing into a function or or we can do this thing uh, we can do this thing we can control c hmm? control v right i have given the same name so do this is still crude solution, but this was a urgent solution came into my mind to uh, put off this fire, right? It's firefighting solution. So what did I do that I have given it the same name, right? And I say that the same thing which was cleared is assigned to assigned back to it, right? So save it and let's see now it will work. Okay, reload it. 
Okay. It's flipping. Flipping. Right, it's flipping. I bring mouse over it. It has stopped. Hey, Camelish, pay attention to your studies. Don't communicate outside the class. Right, it has stopped, right? And then as I mouse out, it will stop working, start working again, right? It has started working, working, right? And as I bring mouse back in, it stops. Right? And as I can bring take mouse out, right, it will start working again. Right? So though this is not the best solution I should be able to give you, but this is definitely a working code. One thing I want to check with you, and that is if I bring it to the button. It has not stopped. Why? Because button is positioned and the mouse is on the button, not on the image. So now what should we do? I think we can assign to the container. Yes, excellent. Very good. So we can come over here. We can come over here and we can get hold of the image division by itself. So we can come here. We say, let image division is equal to Right, and this is the image dvn, right? So now we have got hold of image dvn, and instead of putting that event listener to, to the image, I put that event listener to the image dvn. Right? Save it and let us uh, let us run it. Okay. Reload it and let's run it. Look, mouse is out. Mouse is on the button, right? It has stopped, right? Mouse is outside the button or outside the image to be in. It has started working. Back in, it has stopped working, right? But buttons will do their job. Buttons are going to do their job, right? Buttons are doing their job. Right, got it? Any question? Right. So basically, you know, the deal is that, you know, you, 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 you can see that as I'm coding, I'm in a very happy mood. I'm, you know, very calm and coding very, you know, comfortably. And this is the way you code. That, you know, you, you pay attention to your problem, try to solve it, try to crack it, right? Don't try to hit your head with the walls, right? And just, you know, stay calm and code. Right. Okay. Let me let me groom this code a little bit because I did not like this code. So the issue here is that look, this piece of code is duplicated. Right. It is being, for example, uh, if somebody says that hey hey hey, interval should be five seconds. So I have to go make that five second change here and here. This is no way. Right. So basically, duplication of code is very pinching for a developer. So how can we, you know, resolve this issue? We I can put we can to this in function. We can put it into a function. Very good. Who said this? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, we can put it into a function. 
So we can do this thing, we can, okay. So we can do this thing, we say that this is a function, right? And flip image function. Normally we don't write a function, but let's write it, okay? Flip image function. And let us put this, this thing. Over here, right? And let's have this thing outside it. If we can keep it over here also, because JavaScript will always host the uh, uh, variables on the top of the function, right? Or top of the open space, whatever the case is. So we can cut it from here. And this is a global variable. We can define it by let also. So we come over here and we say that this flip image is a function. And uh, since it is flip image, a flip interval is a global variable. So we can access it within the function. So this is clear interval, right? And once we come over here, so we don't have to do this thing again, uh, event listener and this is the function bracket. So uh, once we have, want to cut, cut very cleverly so that you don't destroy your code, right? And once you are here, add event listener mouse out. So what are you going to do? You are going to call for this function. Right? You are going to call for this function. Right guys, save it, save it. And you know, ultimate test is done once you do something, right? So, and there is one thing, one, one thing is wrong over here more. And that is, what is that? That is, uh, look, This, look, what is happening here? Once your mouse is over, it is going to add this event listener. And let, let me put this event listener outside because it is, it will create problem. It may create problem, a lot of problem actually. Right, so let's put it outside. So now it is good and now it should work. Though one thing will stop, Why, what would stop? What would stop? If we run it and reload it, auto flipping by itself would stop. Though if we do this thing that we go to the button, then we want to flip with the help of buttons, it will work. But as we go out, it will stop, right? So we have to uh, call the method. Very good, we have to call the function, right? So basically here we have actually, here we have defined this function, but not called it, Never called. right? So control C, control V, and now we are calling it. And once we call it, now it will start working from the beginning. Right, so save it, go back over there, reload it, right? So you can see that it has started working. Right guys, so this is JavaScript in action, right? JavaScript in action, right? So once my mouse is over it, it has stopped. Once I click the buttons, buttons are doing well. 
Once I click the other button, other button is also doing well. Once my mouse is out, it will start working. Once my mouse is back in, it will stop working. Right, Manthan? So you said a word that you know, we want to do this thing and it generated quite a bit of code, right? Okay, so now what else do we want to do here? Well, when we click any image, it should provide some information about the image. Yeah, that is that is not an issue. That 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 is easy. You can provide uh, what they call tags. We can provide tags about it, right? So this this should not be a problem. Uh, but related to Krausal, we are we are kind of thinking about Krausal right now, right? That we can definitely do, and you can try doing it yourself and share share it with us, right? So once, say for example, something in, uh, comes into your mind and I appreciate you're telling me, I'm very happy about it. And say for example, I don't do it, you try yourself, right? And uh, see that whatever you wanted to do, wh were you able to accomplish it? If not, you can discuss it with me, right? Okay, so what else do you want to do here? Say for example, we say that, hey, once you click, so it is like going in the right direction, right? So normally it is going in the right direction. But if somebody clicks the left button, it should start going in the left direction, right? So auto direction should change. Don't you think so? That, you know, originally it is going right, very good. So, but if somebody presses the right button, it is okay. It will keep on going right. But if somebody presses the left button, don't you think that our cursor should start flowing to the left? Right? So, so let me let me show you the code. And you know, do do I have a student in the class right now who feels comfortable enough that if I give him or her control? they can actually do it. Anybody? Yeah, great Manton. So request control. So but before I give you control, <laughs> let me uh, let, let me, uh, uh, you know, commit this code, right? So that we have this chance that we recover it back, okay? <laughs> Just kidding, you know, this is normal uh, procedure, right? So we come over here. Uh, and this is the, yeah. So this is cd dot dot, cd web, Framing summer of 2020, right? And we say get status, right? So we have so many things. We say get at dot get commit minus m. Uh, just before I gave control to Menthon, right? <laughs> so I have committed it now. So, you know, whatever you do, even if you delete the entire code, I would be able to move the head back and get my entire code recovered, right? So no worries. Okay, so come back here now. So uh, you have the control now, let's see what do you want to do. So you have a commentary, right? So whatever you want to do, just let us know. So 
So he wants to make a variable over here. Direction is equal to one, right? So basically, and you know this thing that this you have made this variable within this flip image function by itself. Very good. Direction is equal to zero. So, okay, normally we are taking direction as minus one and one, but this is your implementation. But I, I tell you that you are thinking the right direction. Very good, I appreciate. No if, no if please. Okay, do it, do it as you want, don't worry. Let's see what do you want to do. Maybe you have better solution. Manthan, feel free to use if, it's all right. Escape. You need, you know, this thing that in these editors, you need not to select the entire line. You can just put your cursor in the line and put control X, it will cut the entire line. Okay. Okay, Benton, uh, uh, just a minute. So let me take the control. You, have, you are on the very right direction, right? But let me just groom it, right? So uh, should, may I take the control now, from now on? Is it all right? Okay, thank you very much. And I appreciate you got full marks for today, right? I appreciate. Okay, the deal here is that, you know, like over here, we are giving one or minus one. Let me do control Z, okay? Let me do control Z uh, so that I can start from where, you know, you left. And this is definitely, you know, the same code you wrote. I am going to write the same code, but a little bit different way so that, that you can understand also that why is it different? So I'm doing control Z, otherwise you were on the very right track and I'm very happy about it. Right, Benson? So don't feel uh, this thing that please that, uh, you know, I'm rubbing out this code. This is perfectly good and I'm happy with it, right? Okay. So first thing is that the idea over here, very simple idea. Look, left button flip image is called with negative one. Right button, flip image is called with, with a positive one. Very simple thing, right? So basically, why don't we have a global variable over here? We say, let and let me take your name, right? Direction. 
that direction is equal to one, right? Any direction, you know, any initial direction is good, right? Well, that direction is equal to one, right? And uh, once we uh, click the left button, right? Once we click the left button, what is this going to do is that it is going to make the direction equal to one, right? And then it is going to have this parameter over here. Right? And once we click the left button, let me copy this. It is going to make direction negative one and flip image. So uh, you said right button for minus one. So just. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. So uh, left button for minus one and right button for plus one. Very good. Right. So basically, you know, so basically this is, this is good up, up till now. Okay. So left button, right buttons are tuned accordingly. And now we, what we have to do over here that this function flip image function. So basically here we will put direction. Right. Instead of putting plus one or minus one, just put direction. Right. And similarly, yeah. That's it. That's it, sir. Let's see. Yeah, no, no yeah. if, no uh -huh. else, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So basically, we have to maintain a variable to keep the track of this thing that whether our direction, current direction is left or right, and feed the same track to up auto flipping function. No? Right? Better, sir. better. Okay, great. So think rationally, okay? Okay, so let's see. Hopefully, keeping our finger crossed, everything is good and running. So this is boy kneeling. Then these people in the library. Then this is the normal direction, right direction, right? So people, three girls. And this uh, console and this thing, right? So this is the right direction, right? And now I come over here. One thing that image has stopped flipping. The other thing is that once I click here, it has started going left. And if I go out, it will resume the left course, which it has. Right guys? So once I click the left button, it, you know, it keeps on flipping left then. Once I click the right button, it keeps on flipping right. Right, guys? One more thing. So look, you can do so much. Say some, sometime a person get annoyed with this flipping image and thinks, hey, right, okay. Once I click the image, and even if I have gone out, it should not resume until I click it back in. Now, sir, yes. So can we shuffle the pictures from like uh, all pictures? Yeah, you can use random, right? What is, what is your question? Probably I'm not getting your question. Who is asking? Danush, you're asking? Yes. Yes, sir. So we the pictures are in like in a straight direction, right? One after in, in other. In a particular order. Yeah, in yes. a particular order. So we can shuffle the images from... Yeah, 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 absolutely. So basically time. what are we doing over here is that we are doing plus one or negative one right over here, right? So instead yeah. of doing plus one or minus one, we can uh, call for a random number between zero and five, uh, zero and four and pick that number. Okay, okay. All right? Okay. Uh, uh, have you got it? So we have that math.random function, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so yes. You can get that. That is not, that should not be a big issue. You you can try it yourself, okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else? Any question? So what is this idea that once you click into the 
image by itself, not the buttons. You clicked into the image by itself. It should stop flipping. How are you going to make it? So again, we set the variable for mouse out. When the mouse out, we set variable to again like zero, and we click on any container. So again, we like uh, start flip. Ah, say it again. What did you say? Say it again. So uh, we set the variable. So we when when we mouse out, we set variable to like uh, zero. And uh -huh. when we click on container, so we set variable to like one. So okay. if we found one, then uh, like we call uh, flipping. Yeah, stuff. very good. This is a nice idea, right? So who is going to implement? I think, it? but if uh, you choose container, then it also going to assign buttons to. Yeah. So let's don't do it with container. Let's do it with main image. Right, let's don't do it with buttons, right? Let's do it with the main image, right? So who is going to implement it? Hmm. The mention you have you have taken your turn, right? I'm happy with you. Don't worry. Only for today. Right? Tomorrow you have to prove yourself once again, <laughs> right? Okay. So yeah. Yes, yes. No. Ankit, you don't feel comfortable? No, sir. I didn't get it. So, issue is we want this thing. That look, this is running. Yeah, I I know what we are gonna do, but I am not getting ideas. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. So, idea here is that we set okay. One one thing we can do. Once we click, we make the direction zero. Right? Direction is either plus one or minus one, right? So we make the direction zero. Once we are going to make the direction zero, you know, even if that uh, set interval is working and working, but it will keep on bringing the same image back to us, same big image back to us, right? So it will show that it is stationary. This is one thing we can do. Right, this is one thing we we can do, right? So, what what can you do better? Because in the back end it is working, working. So we don't we want to offload JavaScript a little bit, you know. We don't want it to be busy for nothing. So look, once you're coding for yourself, for your principal, think very sincerely, think very wisely, right? and uh, give give your best solution if you don't like a solution don't present it right sometimes you have to do five fighting games <laughs> once testing team is sitting at your head <laughs> yes you know sometimes testing team people are very good they know how to code and things like this. But many time testing team people are very theoretical, just theoretical. They don't know really how to code. And this is very easy to trick those people. But if they are really good people, then you know, you cannot trick them. Okay, yes. I think, sir, I want to tell the code. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm at your service, you know. <laughs> so it is main image dot add event listener. Yeah, great. Click, click. Uh, function name. Okay, like, let me let me code up till here, right? Yes, so sir. I come over here. I say main image dot add event listener click function right okay now need to set it to zero and the direction so you want to do that 
direction is equal to zero. So do you think that direction is equal to zero is okay? Because then you would now never be able to resume it, uh, you know, by just by clicking it. Okay, we can do this thing by otherwise. Okay, but let's let's try this thing, right? Direction is equal to zero, right? So this is you have done. Go back here, reload, right? And we come back here, stopped, right? Button click is working. Move out, it should start working, right? It is working. Move back in, it will stop. Now let us click the image. I have clicked the image. Move out. Its direction is zero. Right? Its direction is zero. So since its direction is zero, so basically at the back end, machinery is working. Right? Do you want to see that machinery working? Inspect element. So here you'll see in a minute. You'll see. No, because the browser is not taking action for that thing because it is, it has sensed that it is same. But otherwise you will see, you know, something happening here. Let me show you that action. Let me just uh, resume the action and then you'll see. Okay, now it should resume. Okay, now you'll see. Can you see? As it changes, you know, as it, you know, buzz, buzz. Right, so sometimes you have so many event listeners working, so it is as if you are looking at the functionality of an engine, right? So you can see that, right? And once I go back here, it has stopped. I click here, image, it has stopped again, right? So, but this is probably, in my opinion, not best solution. So, Okay, let's have this solution for now. And uh, let me let me give this take this opportunity to ask you end of the session questions, right? Uh, let me do this thing. Let me just share this code with you so that everybody can get it and then ready to answer my questions, right? So I come over here. No, this is not your window. So get status, get add dot, get, what is get? Uh, get commit uh, minus M. What did we do today? Played with basic browser, browser, right? So played with basic browser, this is what we did today. And get push. Okay, here it goes. So get this code, please. And let me stop share. And let me ask explicitly, okay? So, web programming. Insert, today is 17th Jan June. So, Sanjana, where is Sanjana? Hey, Sanjana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sanjana, please share your screen with us. Okay, one second, sir. 
look, I don't want to have such extensive testing. I want to teach you, you know, all these marvelous articles and, you know, I want to teach you all these marvelous things in JavaScript. I really want to make you very perfect in JavaScript. But some people have started to stop paying attention. So that made me to steal some time out of lecture and test you guys. Okay, yes. Sanjana, you are unable to share your screen. I'm sharing it. Please. So let me stop recording here.